The Battle of Midway was a major naval battle fought between the Japanese Navy and the U.S. Navy. This battle would be known as one of the most crucial wins of the war for the Allied forces. Midway was the area between Hawaii and Japan. This battle would start on June 3rd, 1942, and would end on June 6th, 1942. This battle would start early in the morning on June 3rd, with Japanese aircrafts attacking damaged U.S. vessels on Midway. But little did the Japanese know that the U.S. were east of the initial attacks and were ready for battle. So then, the torpedo bombers and dive bombers had attacked the Japanese naval fleet. Carriers Agakai, Kaga, and Soiru were hit, then abandoned to sink to the bottom of the sea. Hairu would be the only carrier to make it out of the attack alive. Hairu would then respond to the Americans with two waves of attacks, severely damaging the USS Yorktown, but it would stay afloat for a little bit longer until it would eventually sink by a Japanese submarine on June 6th. Late in the afternoon on June 3rd, a USS Yorktown scout plane would find the Hairu and would then send multiple dive bomb attacks that would eventually destroy and sink the Hairu. Over the next couple of days, the US Air Force and Navy would continue to make the Japanese flee their boats and retreat. The Japanese would lose about 3,057 3, men, four carriers, one cruiser, and hundreds of aircrafts, while the US had only lost 362 men, one carrier, one destroyer, and 144 aircrafts. There were many different weapons used during the Battle of Midway, and both the Americans and Japanese forces would have a variety of weapons, such as battleships, aircrafts, aircraft carriers, and guided missiles. All of these would mostly be used for offense. Other weapons used were submarines, anti-aircraft guns, and anti-missiles missiles. All of these were known as defensive weapons. Such weapons, like the aircraft, had multiple variants used during the battle. Some different types of aircrafts used during the battle were patrol seaplanes, fighters, and bombers. Some special models of these aircrafts used by the U.S. were the Douglas SB Dauntless, the Vought SB-2U Vindicator, the Grumman TBF Avenger, Martin B-26 Marauder, and the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. These planes would be used for dive bomb attacks against the Japanese to sink their boats. But the Japanese also had their own set of planes. Some of the planes the Japanese used were the Achi D-3A, the Nakajima, B-5N. These two planes would be used as either level or torpedo bombers, but these com were not compared to anything like the Mitsubishi A6M. This plane was a long-ranged carrier-based fighter that could reach from speeds up to 351 miles per hour. The other thing special about this plane is that it would be used for kamikaze attacks, where a plane would fly into a boat to try to sink it. This was not used during the Battle of Midway, but if they were to back out, they would be looked to their peers as they were nothing. This was a very honorable job to the Japanese. Now, there were many true stories of the Battle of Midway, and a couple of them were from Harry H. Ferrier. He was a radio man, second class. Harry H. Ferrier was a part of the torpedo squadron VT-8 and served as a radio operator and lower gunner on a Grumman Avenger. Torpedo bombers suffered heavy losses since they had to fly low and slow enough to drop torpedoes into the water. Harry was one of the lucky ones to survive. As Harry stated, On the second firing pass by the attacking Zeros, our turret gunner Manning was hit and his turret put out of action. The sight of his slumped and lifeless body startled me. Quite suddenly, I was scared. Matured man at 17. I had never seen death before. And here in one awesome moment, my friends and I were face to face with it. I lost all sense of time and direction, but huddled by my gun, hoping for a chance to shoot back. Harry was one of the only people in the torpedo, torpedo squadron 8 to come out alive. Only four of 400... Only four of 41 torpedo planes returned that day. 
Another story was from LGT Norman Cleese. LGT Norman Cleese was a gunner and operator. He was a part of the Douglas dive bomb fleet that attacked the Kaga. As LGT Norman Cleese stated, the situation was a carrier pilot's dream. No anti-aircraft, all three Japanese carriers heading straight into the wind. Earl Gawler's 500-pound bomb hits squarely on a plane starting its takeoff. Immediately, the whole pack of planes at the stern were in flames, 50 feet high. My bombs landed exactly on the big red circle forward of the bridge. Seconds later, the flames were 100 feet high. Ten minutes after the attack, I saw a large explosion of mist on the Kaga. Rockets of flame, pieces of steel bolted upwards to 300 or 400 feet high. This attack would end up destroying three of the four Japanese aircraft carriers. The other one would be destroyed later on that same day. Here's a story from Lieutenant Charles C. Hartigan. This will also be our final story. As Lieutenant Charles C. Hartigan started, stated in the sinking of the USS Hammond, the Hammond was moored portside to Yorktown. At this time, four torpedoes were reported on our starboard beam. Immediately following the first torpedo, the second torpedo hit. Regaining my senses, I saw that the forecastle deck was awash. When I got down to the bridge, the executive officer was going down the vertical ladder. The captain was the only man on the bridge. We inspected the pilot house, chart house, and radar room and found no one. The captain, the captain, executive officer, engineer officer, and myself all jumped into the water and swam clear of the ship. The captain pointed at a mess attendant, Rabbi. Holding on to the forecastle lifeline, I swam back to him. Just before I got there, the ship went under. Rabbi floated free at about this time. A terrific underwater explosion went off, which all of us, which knocked all of us out but me. The cause of the sinking of the destroyer would be a torpedo from a Japanese submarine. The USS Hammond would sink within four minutes, but it would later explode, killing most of the men around the ship. There were many important commanders in the Navy. Here is the, uh, here is the commander of the Japanese Navy. Admiral Isoku Yamatoto. He was born on April 4th, 1884 and died on April 18th, 1943. He was the commander of the Japanese Navy during World War II, but he was very famously known for his plan on the Battle of Midway. His idea was that if the Japanese could draw the U.S. out and destroy their naval fleets, they can continue to keep pushing into the American territory and take over their base on the Midway Islands. But this plan would ultimately fail because he didn't expect the U.S. to be ready for their ambush. Now here is the American Navy commander. Admiral Chester Nimitz was born on February 24th, 1884, and would die on February 20th, 1966. He would be the commander of the U.S. Navy during World War II. He would also be known for being at the station in Hawaii and decoding the message from the Japanese and finding out the dates that the Japanese would attack and how they would attack Midway. With such information he had he, he had at hand, Nimitz would get the Navy out to Midway as fast as they could so they could defend the islands and push the Japanese back to their home. Midway was one of the most important battles of the war for many reasons, but one of the most important ones was for the turning point for the U.S., since this was such a devastating defeat for the Japanese, they couldn't make up the amount of men they had lost. This would also be a huge turning point for the U.S. This battle would make it so the U.S. could push the Japanese further and further back into their territory, eventually leading to the U.S. winning the war. I would like to go over my Works Society page. So here is all the work I have cited.